when we started our bonus project to communicate via the geostationary satellite Q0100, we created a to-do list. A high power 2.4 GHz transmitter, a sensitive receiver for 10 GHz, and an internet connection to the Adalm Pluto. In the last video we built a prototype for the transmitter. We just need an antenna to complete the task. So this week we will make a cheap first version of the receiver and hopefully listen to the first signals from space. And you will learn PLL. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. 10 GHz is a very high frequency. Not easy to handle and usually the equipment is costly. Because we do not have a lot of money, in this video we will find out how we can receive such highest frequency signals for only a few dollars. We will learn how to reduce frequencies and why this is good for our wallet. We will learn how stable highest frequencies are created. We will see the advantages of mass production and we will try to get a signal from space. First of all, this experiment is only possible because we are very fortunate. Why? For a long time we can receive satellite TV with standard TV sets. These satellites broadcast at 10.7 to 12.75 GHz. The Q0100 is a spare transponder of such a TV satellite called es 2 Because satellites are costly, they contain additional transponders in case one of the main transponders dies. The amateur radio community is allowed to use one of those transponders as long as the main transponders work. So the Q0100 transponder also has to use similar frequencies, but of course not the same as TV stations. Fortunately, also satellite dishes work on the frequencies used by Q0100. So we should be able to repurpose such a dish. But how does such a dish work? Where I live, the satellite beam comes from around 32 degrees above the horizon and from 156 degrees, which is nearly south. The dish concentrates the energy to one focal point where we install the first part of our receiver, the LNB. We can use 40, 60, 80 centimeters or even bigger dishes. On this chart you see that the gain of such dishes is considerable. The 80 centimeter dish I plan to use has a gain of around 38 dB. Do you remember the dB numbers of the last video? 38 dB is 6300 times. The 31 dB of the 40 cm dish still is 1200 times. So the satellite signal is heavily amplified before it reaches the LNB. But what is an LNB? It is a low noise block down converter. According to Wikipedia, such a device has lots of functions. The LNB is a combination of low noise amplifier, frequency mixer, local oscillator, intermediate frequency or IF amplifier. It serves as the RF front end of the satellite receiver, receiving the microwave signal from the satellite collected by the dish, amplifying it and down converting the block of frequencies to a lower block of intermediate frequencies. And you know what? The dish, including the LNB, cost me only around $35 shipped. Incredible! The fruit of mass production. This is hacking I like. Repurpose mass produced products for something meaningful. Here I have such an LNB and of course I had to take it apart. It is not a valuable one and could not be used for the Q0100 as we will later see. Its main IC is a CXNB4202. This is a specialized chip for LNBs and in its datasheet we find the block diagram of a typical LNB. As Wikipedia said, we find low noise amplifiers, a mixer, two local oscillators and an IF amplifier. Two things are new here. First, LNBs have two antennas, one horizontally and one vertically polarized. We can switch between these two antennas by applying 12 or 16 volts to the LNB. And they have two local oscillators one for the low and one for the high band. 
we can switch the high band local oscillator on by sending a 22 kHz signal to the LNB. But we do not need the high band and QO100 is vertically oriented. So we just feed our LNB with 12 volts. Fortunately, these values are standardized and the power is sent through the coax cable. This is why we have to inject it somewhere along the line. Let's travel with the signal from the antenna to the output. The first step is the horn, where waves from space enter the LNB. Next, it travels via the antenna to a low noise amplifier on 10 GHz. The disassembled LNB uses these small V75 chips, which are quite cheap for what they can do. The next is a frequency mixer. Viewers of video number 286 know that if we mix the input frequency with the frequency of the local oscillator, we get the sum and the difference of these frequencies as an output. The difference is always lower than the two signals. So this is a promising path to lower cost. We will later have a closer look at those local oscillators because they are essential for frequency stability. After the mixer, we have the IF amplifier. Of course, we need filters everywhere between these stages. A closer look at the PCB shows that microwave PCBs look very different from standard PCBs. They look a little artistic with strange structures. For the layman, they look like crop circles or other structures made by extraterrestrials. The expert, however, sees everywhere filters consisting of inductances and capacitances. And the accountant sees that such filters can be produced cheaply and in masses because they are just part of the PCB. That is a big part of the secret that such an LNB costs less than $10. The packaging of the LNB says that the low LO frequency is 9.75 GHz. So we can calculate where we can receive the signal coming out of the LNB. The Q0100 band is at 10.489 GHz. Minus 9.75 GHz equals 739 MHz. This is a frequency we can handle with our SDR receivers. Good news! We also can use cheap cables to connect the LNB to the receiver because the signal was amplified and cable losses on 739 MHz are much lower than on 10 GHz. These cheap LNBs use dielectric resonator stabilized local oscillators, short DROs. Compared with quartz crystals, a DRO is relatively unstable with temperature and frequency variations can be as much as plus minus 2 MHz at 10 GHz. Not good if the signals we want to listen to are only 2.5 kHz wide. So we need something much better, even to start with we need to be able to use crystal oscillators, which are much more stable. Unfortunately, we do not get such parts for 10 GHz. But ingenious engineers found a way to get the job done. They invented the PLL or phase locked loop. This is such an essential concept that we will pause for a moment with our satellite project and have a closer look. I use a CD4046 chip to build such a PLL and show you how it works. It consists of three parts, a voltage controlled oscillator or VCO, a phase comparator and a low pass filter. Optionally, you can add a frequency divider. The VCO produces a frequency which is influenced by a voltage. The higher the voltage, the higher the frequency. This CD4046 can create frequencies up to around 1 MHz. Of course, nothing for our 10 GHz project, but good enough to show you the principle. The phase comparator has two inputs and one output. It is basically an XOR gate and it creates a 1 if the two signals are not the same. If the two signals are exactly the same, its output is 0. I now feed a 1 kHz signal to one input and connect the output of the VCO to the other input of the phase comparator. What would you expect? Because the two signals are completely different, we see a fluctuating signal. We also see that the VCO all the time changes its frequency. And now comes the trick. If I connect the output signal of the comparator to the input of the VCO, everything is stabilized nearly immediately. 
and the output signal is nearly the same as the input signal. Cool! The input voltage of the VCO is around 400 mV. If I increase the frequency of the input signal, the output of the VCO follows closely and the blue voltage increases slowly up to 4.15 volts at 1.1 MHz. Still here, the input and the output frequency are the same. As soon as one of the two signals change, the phase detector creates a different voltage and adjusts the frequency. But the main question remains. Why should I build such a stupid machine? In the best case, it reproduces the input signal. You might think I steal your time. But wait for a second. I reduce the input signal to 1 kHz again and add a CD4040 counter chip to the game. This chip divides frequencies by power of 2. We start with divided by 2. What happens? The output frequency doubles. Interesting. Because the output signal is divided, the phase comparator detects differences until the VCO has exactly double the frequency. Now both signals are the same again. And the comparator is happy. And what happens if I use the divided by 4 output of the 4040? We get 4 kHz. We just invented a simple frequency multiplier. And of course, we could go on till we get the maximum frequency of the 4046 chip. Really, at the 2 to the power of 10 output, it is 1.024 MHz. 1 kHz times 2 to the power of 10. Cool. And because the ratio is locked, this frequency is nearly as stable as the input signal. Why only nearly? Because of course, we also multiply the frequency variations of the input with a multiplication factor. And I want to show you another effect which becomes important. Phase noise. At 1 kHz, the output signal jitters a little if we compare it with the input. Which means its frequency oscillates around 1 kHz. If used as a local oscillator, this noise quickly transfers into our receiving signal. And this is obviously not good. Fortunately, it can be reduced, as we see on 1 MHz. But this is stuff for other discussions. Good LNBs use precisely the same principle for their local oscillators. They have a 25 MHz resonator and boost it to 9.75 GHz. The factor can easily be calculated. 390. Some LNBs have 27 MHz resonators. Then the factor is 361. All in all, we need a very stable 25 or 27 MHz signal to start with, which is not provided by the standard $10 LNBs, and which is not needed for TV satellite reception, because TV signals are much broader and satellite receivers can automatically adjust their receiving frequency if the LNB drifts. But this is a topic for another video. The last question remains. Does it work? Yes, I heard signals from QO100. Ideal connection to home station one. Yes. Uh, okay, my first on the line at one. Yes, I don't. I think it is already. But pay attention. The opening angle of the 80 cm dish is smaller than I expected. I put the receiver to 739.75 MHz and a span of 550 kHz moved the dish very slowly and watched the stations appear on the spectrum. This was all for today. Next week I hope we can start with frequency stabilization efforts or with building the 2.4 GHz antenna. Because even without a receiver, I still could try my transmitter and use the online satellite receiver in Cornwall to check if I hear myself. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.